A Sioux Falls mother of two says she is alive today thanks to the actions of her family. Alana Willis doesn't fit the profile of someone who would have to be concerned about suffering a stroke, but in April, she did. A blood clot shut down part of her brain, and she was in grave danger of losing her life. In tonight's Eye on Kelloland, Alana and her family share their story with the rest of us. On April 28th, a Wednesday morning, Alana Willis woke up. After fumbling with her alarm, falling over, spilling dog food and coffee on the floor. I thought to myself, hmm, I must be really tired. Alana took a shower, got out, and then wiped the fog from the mirror. That's when I saw my face. And I saw the right side of droopiness. And I knew. I knew I was having a stroke. Then she came upstairs, right? And she almost fell going up the stairs. My kids, my two girls, two teenage girls were in the kitchen and I went to tell them I'm having a stroke, I need help, and I couldn't talk. And that was the first time I realized I couldn't talk. At first I thought nothing was wrong. She just came up to say good morning. And then I looked over and saw my sister with her hands over her mouth and she kind of backed away. And so I was really confused, and then I heard my mom try to talk. I could formulate the words in my head, but it didn't come out right. It came out as gibberish, and I could hear it. I knew I wasn't speaking correctly, and the response in their eyes told me that they knew something was really wrong. Then mom tried to talk again, and she couldn't. And then that was when, like... We started kind of putting the puzzles together. So I could tell she was really confused, um, and I knew something was very wrong. So I called my dad right away. The first thing out of her mouth was, something's wrong with mom, you need to come home. As I was going to call 911, he came, and he was already, like, here. He was just a few blocks away. They had her ready to go, and I just grabbed her by the hand, and then we went out to the truck. I looked at her, you could see the, the droop. You just knew that she's having this stroke. And then it's like, it's time. Time is, you know, early identification and time. I heard my dad say it over the phone when he called 911 that she was having a stroke. And I was like, okay, this is, this is real. And I knew that there was a great possibility that I might um, never see my mom the same way again. And it, it really scared me. Alana remembers a lot of what was going on, but one thing really sticks out in her mind, and it happened here at Avera West just before they transferred her to the main hospital. The doctors here at the emergency room had given her a very powerful blood thinner. This part's probably the hardest for me. Um, because of that clot busting medication, I had just a few moments where I was able to speak before I got in that ambulance and I was able to look over at my daughters and my husband and tell them I love them. And I just said, I love you. Call my mom. <laughs> and um, so anyway, because I, I didn't know if that was going to be the last time I'd be able to speak to them. Once at Avera Hospital, Alana was rushed to the neurosurgery unit and into the care of Dr. Alex Lynn. Time is absolutely critical. Uh, when it comes to stroke, uh, brain cells will die very rapidly. I was driving there with the girls and Dr. Lynn called me and he said, uh, this is what I think we should do. You know, we're given the TPA, but I'd also like to go in and just remove the clot. And I said, you know, go and, you know, do, do your best. So uh, when she first came in, she had this large blood vessel to the left side of her brain. The main trunk that goes to the left side of her brain uh, was totally occluded. Now she was maintaining some ability to get flow around that blockage, but there's no telling how long that was going to last. Dr. Lynn started the procedure and I could see it. There was this huge TV screen next to me, huge. And that must've been what he was using to navigate, but I could see the clot on the screen. And I kept wanting to look. <laughs> and he goes, would you please lay your head back down? And that's when I was like, oh, I should probably be still. He's up in my brain. I should probably not move. <laughs> A lot of uh, physicians will do this procedure with patients asleep, but I and many others choose not to do that for a couple reasons. Number one, we can do it faster. And number two, we know how the patient's actually doing during the procedure. But the incredible part was when he got the clot and removed it and released the blood flow back it was this rush into the left side of my head like I can't describe. Um, a lot like a, a really powerful brain freeze. It came on fast and then it went away. And within moments, Dr. Lynn started asking me questions and I could talk. I just remember going into the door 
And when she looked at me and talked to me, I was like, she's back, right? Like two in just a matter of like, what, 90 minutes. A lot of Bill know the odds of this happy outcome were not in their favor. That's because as experienced nurses, both understand the dire situation Alana was facing. They believe it was the ability of their daughters to overcome their fears and do what needed to be done that made the difference. Then they were calm, you know. You could tell there was some emotion there, but it didn't keep them from making the right choices. Oh, I'm so proud of them. It's... Yeah, she's here with us today because of that. I realized that um, sometimes you take things for granted and it might be little things like um, her saying good morning or her saying I love you or um, hugs, hugs, <laughs> hugs, hugs. <laughs> and smiles even. She couldn't smile when we saw her. I know that that could easily have all been taken away in an instant. Alana says she will likely be on blood thinners for the rest of her life. They have not found a specific cause for her blood clots. She also says she's living proof that uh, quick action saves lives and that strokes don't just happen to the elderly. She encourages every family to have a conversation about the signs of a stroke and to get counseling in the wake of any traumatic event.